Melanie Rose. I am Kelly Geist. And we are here with our first episode of The Antler Queens. Um, Kelly, does, does it look like our open played on time or did we go live a little after the open started? Um, you know what? I'm very sorry. My, um, I just opened up you know a random window. <laughs> you know what? Let's start this okay, one. I'm good. <laughs> okay, you're good. Okay, yeah. okay, you're good. Okay. Did the sorry. um did the open play? Yes, it did. Okay, great, excellent. Sounds good. Okay, I wasn't sure if that played. Uh, anyway, now we're just rambling here. So, welcome <laughs> to the first episode of the Antler Queens, uh, a Yellow Jackets podcast. I am Melanie Rose, and I am Kelly Geist. And today we're going to be covering the pilot of our favorite new TV show, Yellow Jackets, on Showtime. But before we dive into the episode, we just wanted to recap some Yellow Jackets news that's been around during the past couple of weeks. Uh, first and foremost, Melanie Linsky won Best Actress in a Drama Series at the Critics' Choice Awards for her portrayal of Shauna Shipman. Congratulations to Melanie. Um, she totally, totally deserved this. And I mean, there were some really amazing people alongside her as nominees. And I think that she she nailed it and totally deserved the win. So that was really cool to see. Did you see her speech? I did. I love that she thanked her nanny. I thought I that was just <laughs> adorable. You know, like as a mom, you know, I think you take for granted the, the people that help support you. And it's really nice to see her shouting out, you know, such a an important person in her life. I thought that was great. Yeah. And, and she was, she was adorable. I mean, she was just, you could tell she was a little overwhelmed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It was, it was, she was, she was adorable and relatable. I loved it. I loved it too. Her husband was so cute. He did a little tribute on Twitter. I know. I love that. Um, and then also uh, we had uh, Jasmine Savoy Brown's birthday on March 21st. And of course she plays adult Taisa. And um, in other news. Teen Taisa. Oh, teen Taisa. I'm sorry. Yeah. Gosh, I am. Uh, <laughs> saying the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Um, and then we had Christina Ricci in the news. Uh, it was announced that she will be in the new Netflix series, Wednesday Adams. And while she won't specifically be reviving the role, uh, we're not exactly sure what her part will be, but we know she'll be in the series and it is by Tim Burton, which will prove to be, I'm sure, an absolutely incredible series. And I can't wait to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Excellent. Sure. Well, um, why don't we dive in? Um, Kelly, do you want to start and give us the director and the writers from the pilot episode of Yellow Jackets? Sure. Um, the pilot episode was directed by Karen Kusama, uh, who also worked on Girl Fight, which uh, some people might be familiar with. And it was written, the episode was written by showrunners Ashley Lyle and Bart Nickerson, who worked on uh, Narcos Narcos Mexico and Dispatches from Elsewhere, which is still a show I, I need to get get back to because I only saw the pilot and it was really good. But don't know yeah. if a season two is ever coming out or not, but it's it's a good show to check out for sure. TBD. Yep. All right. Well, uh, you know, let's jump into the episode itself. Um, the first scene we see is in the past and it is Pit Girl running through the woods barefoot in the snow. Um, Kelly, what do you think the most important takeaways are from this opening scene? Um, well, it's uh, one thing that that I keep thinking about is she obviously she's she's scared. Um, she's in a scary situation, but she's also it's there's snow on the ground. It's cold and she's running in a nightgown and bare feet. And, and looking rather lost, which just opens up a lot of questions. Like she was, like she really has, you know, almost like she was taken out of bed in the middle of the night or something and has no idea what's going on. Um, we don't really see her face. I believe they used, uh, they used to double, they used doubles for most of the people, most of the girls in the woods in the pilot. Um, but she, falls into the pit. Uh, she's running through the woods and falls into a pit. And we see the camera close uh, focus on a gold heart necklace around her neck. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that's going to be important because the camera didn't even show her face, but they zoomed in on that necklace. So that's, we know that's going to be an important detail. 
Absolutely. And then we had the cloaked person there uh, mm -hmm. wearing some animal pelts, uh, some pink Chuck Taylors, and a quintessential uh, 90s co-ed naked soccer shirt um, as that person approaches the edge of the pit. I loved that. Same I love here. that. Same here. It's a good opening scene. And, you know, that just sets the tone for all of the different mysteries that are to come. I think it was a very strong opening. And from there, uh, we move into the present timeline. Um, mm -hmm. We're still not sure, you know, we don't know what year it is in this first past flashback. We will find out, of course. But um, then we move to the present and we have a woman interviewing multiple people about the 96 state champion Yellow Jackets. Um, what are the most important takeaways from that first scene that we see in the present timeline? Well, we don't know exactly right off the bat who she's interviewing, but we see her talking to a woman um, <laughs> who just, she's such a caricature. She's got this great accent. She's sitting there smoking her cigarette and drinking her wine. And um, she said, I'll never forget the day that I found out the plane crashed. I mean, that could have been me. <laughs> So, me. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> so we'll get, she was, she was very dramatic. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll get some more insight on her in a bit, but that, um, but yeah, she was obviously somebody who was supposed to be there. Um, and then we see Randy, um, who we'll see later on um, as well. And uh, he just said that he knew some of them pretty, pretty good back in the day. Uh, but my favorite part of this <laughs> Where the um, there was an elderly woman who was probably one of their teachers <laughs> saying the only thing she said was, all I can tell you is not one of those girls gave a good goddamn about trigonometry. <laughs> it's funny. And what's really funny about that is we see trigonometry as kind of a recurring theme. So this is the first time we hear the word. And of course, we'll cue you into um, to more of that trigonometry theme as we go on. And you know, I can't, I can't help but wonder if, um, like, why would she bring that up? Why, why would she choose? To, I mean, okay, so maybe of all things, wanted, right? I know, like, maybe she wanted to be snarky, sure, um, but it seems like it was a response to something. Mm -hmm. It seemed intentional, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we learned that it, in fact, was probably intentional as we hear the trigonometry again. So, yeah. um, and and then we see uh, the vice principal, vice principal. Uh, Berzonski, ooh, I stumbled <laughs> on that one. Um, and he said, I probably shouldn't say this, but some of these kids, eh, no big loss if we're honest, but those girls were special. They were champions. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of an interesting take, right? He's kind of a shady bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. Kids, we could lose them. These other kids are losers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Um, and from this opening scene, uh, we shift back to the past timeline again. Um, we see the state championships final game um, and the team wins with an accidental header by Jackie. Um, mm -hmm. And in this scene, we hear the first of the incredible 90s songs um, today by the Smashing Pumpkins, which I thought was a really strong way to um, incorporate that. Yeah, for sure. That was one of the biggest albums back at that time. Absolutely. And, you know, that that got, <clears throat> excuse me, that got me from the beginning. Uh, you know, the entire episode is full of awesome 90s music, which we'll touch upon. But I love that they opened with that. I thought it was a very smart song choice. Yeah, um, for sure. It, it really, yeah, it, set, it sets the tone in it. It's, the nature of the song is just, it's very appropriate in general for the story too. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, we cut to a scene still in the past timeline um, in New Jersey. We are in Jackie's bedroom. And um, Kelly, would you like to share the, the note slash observation from, from the scene? Tell me the phrase that you used in your notes to describe what was happening. Murder fingering. Murder fingering. Yes. <laughs> some very aggressive fingering happening um, with Jackie and her boyfriend, Jeff, in, in Jackie's bedroom. Um, yeah. Very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> very aggressive murder fingering. I think that is a very accurate, um, accurate term. Thank you for inventing that. <laughs> I felt so bad for Jackie. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, along with the murder fingering, we see some other cool 90s nostalgic items there in Jackie's bedroom. I, I think these were some of your favorite nostalgia moments from the show, right? 
the sassy magazines. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, my heart. <laughs> yep, yep. And sassy the- was such a staple of of my my young years. I mean, it, it brings you right back, right, to your teenage mm-hmm. bedroom. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. For sure. And um, Gap Scent. You know, we don't know what scent, but we could speculate. What what Gap Scent would you speculate Jackie was? Yeah, I think I think we both felt like she was a heaven girl. Heaven, I'm a yep. dream girl myself. Yeah. I, gosh, I feel like I had a few of them, um, but I think Dream may have been the one that I wore the most. I also wore a lot of Malibu Musk back then, which I mean, (laughs) like, what's up with Malibu Musk? That was maybe a big mistake, but you know, that's what we did back then. So yeah, yeah. Um, And we see some white wicker furniture. We see some CDs, um, interesting choices, dance pool time, Green Day, which um, was very popular back then, Dookie. Uh, Artie Shaw, Whispering Winds, and Cole Porter. Yeah, wouldn't have pegged uh, wouldn't have pegged Jackie for to be an Artie Shaw fan. So it's kind of that's kind of interesting. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I see her as like more of a no doubt girl. Right. I don't even really see her as Green Day either. But you know, well, we know she likes things. snow. <laughs> that is that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and as as the murder fingering continues, eventually um, Jackie fakes an orgasm. Yeah, she just wants to get it over with as soon as possible. She, <laughs> she's ready to get him out of there. Yes. And then she moves into the bathroom and she's kind of looking at herself pensively, brushing her teeth. And what do we see here again, Kelly, in the, the mirror in Jackie's bathroom? The gold necklace that we saw in Pit Girl. The gold necklace. Twice already. And mm-hmm. we're only in the first, you know part of the show. So I think there's something to this gold necklace. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, yeah. Gold necklace almost had more time in, in the episode than, uh, than Misty. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right. Well, then we move into an exterior scene still in the past timeline. We hear Supernova by Liz Fair and Shauna sitting outside of Jackie's house writing in her journal um, with one of those cool multicolored click pens that I think we all had back in the 90s. Those and were the best. They were. They absolutely I remember were. I used to write notes to my friends in high school and like, you know, we'd write each other these like four or five page notes and each paragraph would be like a different color. <laughs> Did you we fold were... it up into the little footballs that yes, you like stuck into that. the locker slots? Those were the days, football notes. Oh my God, I love that. Yeah. And thank Memories. you for reminding me about the locker slots because I forgot, I like, I remembered just, I thought I remember just passing them in the hallway or whatever, but no, yeah, you're right. You put it in the locker slot. Yeah, that, That's yeah. where you put the folded up paper football notes back in the 90s. Thank um, you for that bit of nostalgia. I had totally forgotten about that. <laughs> yes, I, I think one of my favorite things about Yellow Jackets is all the nostalgia. So that's something we'll, we will continually be touching upon in all of our episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so back to the scene. Um, we have uh, Shauna outside. Um, she sees Jeff crawl out the window and looks annoyed. Jackie gets in the car, turns off Liz Fair. And then what song do we hear, Kelly? In Bomber. Something, something, licky, boom, boom. <laughs> licky, boom, boom, no. Exactly, yes. Um, we, I think, can all relate to that uh, Snow yeah. Informer song from back then. Um, and, of course, now we've determined that we're sometime in the 90s, of course. Um, yes. 1996 is the actual year, so we can say 96 when we're referring to the past timeline now. And I, I um, love, by the way, Jackie's shirt in this scene. It's just like, it screams palmettos to me. Do you remember Palmettos? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it was <laughs> I think I had that exact same shirt actually. Mhm. Um okay, so what what's next in the scene? Let's let's kind of, you know, keep it keep it moving here. Um let's see. So Jackie wants their room at Rutgers next year to be pink and green. Um mm-hmm. it's Very they lovely. have a little exchange there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Shauna seems a little, a little taken aback by, um, by the fact that she saw Jeff sneaking out of her window. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some foreshadowing there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess she, it sounded like Jackie was going to break up with him. Um, because she's mentioned, you know, what happened to ripping off the band aid and, um, no distractions before nationals. And, and she said she didn't want to show up to college a virgin. 
Right. And, you know, if they were each other's firsts, then they would be linked forever. Um, yeah. And Shauna was a little confused about the virgin thing. Um, yeah. Because she, she says, sure? wait, Jeff's a virgin? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she said that they, Jackie explained that they had broken up a bunch of times, but never long enough to count. Mm -hmm. so. Interesting. And uh, then they drive by a sign in their town of New Jersey um, that congratulates the boys baseball team. And uh, Jackie tells Shauna to honk and ja Jackie screams, uh, try undefeated bitches. We're going to, we're going to motherfucking nationals. So, you know, they were basically, it, it's kind of lame. The town, you know, puts up this mediocre baseball congratulatory thing when they should actually be honoring the girls soccer team. Yeah. So that's such bullshit. I, <laughs> I totally got where Shauna was at though. Like I, I, I would be really afraid to be, to, to be mistaken for supporting that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then after that, we move back into the present day timeline, which is 2021. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, back to uh, vagina things. We have Shauna <laughs> masturbating on her daughter's um, bed to a picture of her boyfriend. Yeah. And then she, like, casually goes back to doing some laundry. So Shauna's a little bit of a creeper. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. That was, um, you know, between the murder fingering and the um, teen boyfriend masturbating. I mean, we're already mm -hmm. off to a, a pretty sexual start here. So interesting. there is a um, there's a great panel on YouTube that um, that you can find if you look for it. I think it's with I think it's with Vulture um, and it's the cast of Yellow Jackets. And have you seen this? No, I have not. Um, you should watch it. It's pretty funny. They ask the woman. The, the panel moderator, um, and, and I apologize, for, I forget her name. Um, she asks Melanie about that scene. <laughs> and if there was any specific direction that she was given, she said, yes, they were extremely specific and that there was a certain sound that they were going for. <laughs> mm, and that it, it had to sound like the most mediocre, unfulfilled orgasm <laughs> possible. <laughs> <laughs> Which just makes the scene so much funnier when you watch back after knowing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we have another character introduced here. We have uh, Jessica Roberts approaches adult Shauna in the present timeline and says that Shauna has been ignoring her calls. And Shauna agrees to let her talk to her for just five minutes. And um, tell me a little bit more about this conversation. This was one of my favorite conversations in the episode, by the way. Yeah, so she... she lets her into the house um, and begrudgingly. And she's unpacking groceries and she actually, um, she, one of the things that's in her grocery bags is, it's like an Us Weekly or some kind of tabloid magazine. And there's a mention of uh, the Yellow Jackets on there because it's the 25th anniversary of the plane crash. Um, and she's basically trying to get her to agree to a book deal which Shauna is, has zero interest in. Um, she tries to tell her that the others had expressed interest and Mel, or Shauna says they're lying and she, she hasn't spoken to any of them in years and she wouldn't even know how to get a hold of them. Um, and the reporter, Jessica Roberts, is, is really pushing this on her and says she'll make a ton of money. Um, and she says, this is, this is a, this is an, a life-changing amount of money that it could bring you. I mean, you were an elite athlete. You had early admission to Brown. Is this really what you what you thought your life would turn out to be? <laughs> Which is so rude. And yep. Shauna just, Shauna has a great moment here where she just gets right up in her face and, uh, and Jessica starts to correct herself. She's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. And, and Shauna just says, I don't care what you meant, you smug little bitch. <laughs> yep. The delivery was flawless. I yeah. loved how Melanie Linsky delivered that line. I think it just really sets the tone for the type of character that adult Shauna is. And mm -hmm. 
that was one of our first indications, I think. And, you know, really quickly, um, we talked about the plane crash and the 25th anniversary. One thing we forgot to do at the top was actually read the episode summary. So oh, really yeah. quickly, I'm just going to read that now just to give some context. Um, you know, and it's interesting because some people may be watching this after watching the whole season. Some people may be watching after just watching the pilot and watching along with us. So we'll try not to give too many spoiler alerts, but I do think it's important to read this plot summary yeah. on IMDb. Okay. On the eve of a fateful flight, a championship high school girls soccer team celebrates by betraying one another. 25 years later, the survivors do their best imitations of well-adjusted people. So from that, we can garner that, um, you know, championship girls soccer team, um, survivors. So that implies that some people did not survive. So mm -hmm. that, you know, just, again, sets the tone for the episode. We should have read that at the beginning, but, you know. It's our first episode. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. So you know what? one thing I I want to uh, one note I want to make about the um, about Shauna's little moment there with Jessica. Um, she also she also says right after she calls her smug little bitch, she says, you don't know a fucking thing about my life. And it it actually it kind of reminds me of um, what I imagine to be Melanie Linsky's reaction to the uh there was a person that worked on the show you know the story right yes yep yeah yep. um and you know melanie linsky doesn't necessarily look like your typical leading lady um you've got she looks like of, a real woman yeah like she a, does. a real woman with curves right and, she's gorgeous. and she owns it she's gorgeous yeah and yeah she looks she looks real um and there's there's she's playing her age too first of all which is which is a big deal because you know in in a typical hollywood show there might be a 30 year old playing a 45 year old mm -hmm. um but she was told they they were very much in agreement with her that um you know because she was a little curvier than the average tv leading lady um they didn't it was very important to Melanie Linsky and uh, the producers that it not be a plot point, uh, whether good or bad. It's just organic. It doesn't affect who she is. Um, and yet there was a person who worked with the show who was no longer with the show who approached her and said, so what are you going to do? Are you, I'm sure they'll pay for a great trainer for you. <laughs> body shaming it is know. so terrible that that even exists out there but good for melanie linsky for just owning it and you know and playing her age and a regular woman it's so relatable you know as a, mm -hmm. a woman with curves i love seeing that on tv you know it's it's so much more authentic and relatable so and when melanie linsky that. talked about this she said you don't you don't know my size doesn't indicate my my level of health she's like you don't see me on my peloton and and it just it her line there with Jessica Roberts reminded me a lot of, of what I imagined her response Absolutely. to that would be. Absolutely. Um, so after we see the Jessica Roberts scene between her and Shauna, it cuts to Natalie meditating while she's simultaneously having a flashback about Pit Girl being strung up and slaughtered. Talk about, you know, disparity of thoughts there. Oh, my goodness. It's like polar opposites. Who doesn't um, think about slaughtering their friends while they're trying to meditate? I mean, it's a very I, well, calming... Casual slaughter. Think about. Yeah. No big deal, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, she gets called in for a group and um, she kind of talks about, you know, after they rescued us, I lost my purpose. And thanks to my time here, I finally know how to get it back. So we've learned that a few things here about ad adult Natalie, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She she's in rehab um, and, you know, she talks about uh, about sex and drugs and drinking Um and uh, she doesn't exactly elaborate um, on on what went on in the wilderness, but she she explained that she thought that all of her vices were because of what she went through in the wilderness and what she'd seen, what she had done, um, which she doesn't go into detail about. But um, she said she realized, thanks to her time there, that she uh, she had lost her purpose after they got back and. She now, now knows how to get it back. And again, doesn't elaborate, but it was due to her time there. So I don't know if it's if that's just because she, um, I mean, we found, find out that she obviously got some mail while she was there, but yeah. she, um, you know, she 
maybe she's just clear, more clear headed because she's not in substances, but there could also be a lot more to it that we don't know about yet. Exactly. So moving on, um, mm -hmm. we cut to Natalie in the past. So now we're back to 1996. We have Natalie drinking with some friends and we have some jerks that pull up and say some rude things to her. <laughs> Hey, burnout, show us your tips. <laughs> I mean, come on. Could you be any less original? Yeah. Um, and then one of her guy friends there, you know, lifts up his shirt and does that. I was I was waiting for a truffle shuffle too, you know. I know, I know. But well, I thought that was does. cute. Yeah, he kinda, yeah. He kind of does his own version of the truffle shuffle. Yes. Bit. I thought that was cute though. Good friend. Um, and then we see um, your friend Allie again. What's she up to? Yeah, she's looking pretty miserable and she's she's sulking about something while Jackie's putting the uh, the little yellow jacket on her cheek. And um but uh but while that's going on, there's also um Shoop by Salt and Peppa is mm -hmm. playing and the girls are all dancing around in the locker room, which is Shoop. Shoop. just a scene right out of my my high school experience, which I appreciated. My one of my favorite memories was of me and my friends actually dancing around and singing to that song in the locker room. So the band locker room, because I was a giant dork. Oh, <laughs> that does not mean you're a dork at all. <laughs> at all. Yes. Um, I, I also love the song Shoop. And it's funny because uh, Made on Netflix prominently featured the song Shoop throughout the series. So um, boy, songs getting a lot of love these days for being such an old song. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, awesome that's really that. cool. Um, something I really enjoyed about this scene was a reference to a Saved by the Bell character. And I'm That's... a huge Saved by the Bell fan. So I thought that was really cute. Do you want to share that? Yeah. So Allie is is kind of sitting there sulking and, and uh, they're getting ready to go into a pep rally. And she's surprisingly not excited about the fact that they won state and are going to nationals. And she says, it's not fair. My dress was going to be amazing. I was the only freshman who got asked. And uh, <laughs> so she's obviously talking about prom and she's going to miss prom because they're going to nationals. Um, you know, even though she has three more years to go. So that's kind of that that tells you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. about and who she and is. then we hear Lottie chiming in. Right. And she says, yeah. does someone okay. want to tell Kelly Kapowski maybe to worry less about the prom and more about not fucking up nationals if she plays like she did at state? So, <laughs> I, I mean, that was spot on just a really smart pop culture reference there by the writers incorporating yes. that like total 90s vibe through and through top to bottom and. I loved that. I thought that was really cute. Um, yeah. And then uh, Thaisa says, yeah, don't worry. That's not going to happen. So, um, <laughs> and then we move on and we see Coach Martinez. Yeah. Um, and uh, he calls Jackie into his office and um, he's explaining to her why he didn't, um, he did, why he made her team captain. And uh, he starts praising the other girls, um, at, which is, there seems to be a theme with, <laughs> with the staff at this high school with really throwing shade on on the students there uh, but uh he explains that she has um the one thing she has that the other girls don't is influence mm -hmm. um so it's uh it, you know she's basically he, the way he describes it she's kind of useless but she has influence yeah so yeah. which is interesting when you think about how the rest of the, se the season went absolutely um, yeah and then we move into the pep rally. Um, there was a lack of enthusiasm for boys baseball. Uh, Brzezonski again is in there um, saying, you know, you tried your best and then has a very enthusiastic response for the girls soccer team. As we hear Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, good vibration. Yeah, I love that. It brought me right back to the New Kids on the Block concert I attended in third grade when Marky Mark opened for them. And, you know, it just it literally brought me right back to that moment. Um, I'm loving the music nostalgia here, as mentioned before, and this is no exception. Yeah, for sure. And I, I loved their equipment manager, Misty, just losing her mind with with excitement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, was kind of cute. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then we move back to future timeline 2021. And uh, what do we see here? 
Um, well, we see Shauna uh, back at home. She's watching a, a game show um, and she curses out one of the contestants, which is really funny. She gets an answer wrong and she's like, Linda, you dumb bitch. I love uh, her. Oh, <laughs> I love these well-placed curses. I, love I know. And, and I, I, I like how they tie this in to um, we're focusing on Thaisa next. And I, I really like how they tie it in because Shauna's it's at a good home. Segue. Yeah, watching TV, and she sees a commercial for uh, Thaisa Turner for state senate, um, and she explains she wants to leave New Jersey out of the wilderness, which I which I liked. Very but, um, do, do people really run commercials for state senators? I, I feel like during political season, at least in California, like everything is a political commercial. So yeah. I tend to think so. But, you know, they could just be also, you know, over exaggerating that just for the purpose of getting that commercial on there to yeah, um, move sure. the story ahead. For sure. Yes. Um, and then it cuts to Ty's house. We mm -hmm. see Simone, her wife, Sammy, her son and their dog Biscuit. And they're doing a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And what, what does the photographer say? She had some cute lines in here. Yeah. So the photographer um, tells them to think, think Kennedy's for the photo shoot. <laughs> Taisa, uh, Taisa's wife, Simone is sitting there with the dog on, on her lap and she just looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> her comment was great here. She says kind of under her breath, I'm about to drive this boy off the bridge. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we get the queer Camelot reference, which I thought was kind of cute. Yeah, the photographer says, uh, calls her the, the queer Kamala. Yeah, yes. I enjoyed that. Um, and then we get back to a past timeline. We're back in 1996 again, doing some time traveling here. And uh, it's Ty, Lottie, Nat, and Shauna. Um, and they're discussing Allie. What are they discussing about Allie? Uh, they are talking about freezing her out because she played really terribly at state and um, they're worried about how she's going to do at nationals and um, they want to freeze her out, but they're not uh, Jackie isn't part of this conversation and they want to keep it from Jackie. Um, but Natalie, who I love um, is basically the one that that sticks up for her. And, and she says, why don't we play like a fucking team? And um, she's, and then <laughs> Tysa tells her she smells like a wino and she storms off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we see a scrimmage here, right? So mm -hmm. uh, we see Laura Lee, one of the characters who insists on praying first. And then uh, Ty says to the coach that she wants to switch sides. And mm -hmm. something crazy happens. Yeah, I think she goes to... to to block Allie. And I think she, I, I think she meant to trip her up del deliberately, but I don't think she meant, um, she, I don't think she meant it to result in what actually happened, which is Allie breaks her leg terribly. Um, like the bone, bone is sticking out. Yes. Yeah. It's, Oh God, I can't, I can't watch that scene back. It's yeah. Oh. And then it's funny because, you know, Misty, the equipment manager who we saw super excited th at the pep rally comes over and says, oh, let me apply some pressure and like <laughs> pushes the bone down and it makes this noise. And it's, it's very cringy for me. Like I love medical shows and all that stuff, but for some reason that, that bone and the, oh, the noise, everything about it, it was, it was just a little bit alarming for me. So yeah. I watch surgery videos for fun sometimes and I can't, I can't even watch this. Yeah. I don't Ugh. know what it was about that broken leg, but it was, uh, it was pretty rough. Yeah. Um, so after we see Allie with the broken leg, we are back to another present timeline back to 2021 and we have Shauna in her kitchen and uh, we're introduced to Kelly, who is mm -hmm. Shauna's daughter. And what happens in this scene? Um, so she, Shauna hears her come in and she says, Kelly, is that you? And, and Kelly's got a great line here. She says, uh, no, it's a marauding pack of thieves come to burgle your 12-year-old desktop and all your ceramic bunnies. <laughs> mm, a mention of bunnies. This is going to be another recurring theme that we see with Shauna, bunnies. So yes, that was yes, a little exactly. a little Easter egg, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and she um, she's trying to get Kelly to stay home and and um, she's talking to her about what she wants to have for dinner and and uh Kelly says she's going out um, and 
Shauna's a little disappointed by that. And she asks if Callie asks if um, if dad is working late again tonight. And she said, yeah, he's having trouble with that whole inventory database thing again. And, and mm -hmm. the good old Callie, fashioned inventory database with the yeah. air quotes and all, right? And Kelly just gives her this look and, you know, says, I'm sorry. Like, you know, like she understands what's, what Someone. seems to be going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seems like she's pretty intuitive and also very sassy like her mother. Yes, very. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we move back to 1996 again. We have Shauna and Jackie in Shauna's room. Shauna's trying on some clothes uh, that Jackie disapproves of because for some reason, you know, Jackie seems to be the boss of Shauna in some ways which is an interesting dynamic between the two of them. And uh, what advice does Jackie give to Shauna for what to wear? She wants her to wear the, the red dress slash the boob dress. And um, Shauna's like, hell no. <laughs> um, she says, maybe I don't want to wear the red dress. And uh, by the way, Jackie's dress is, is crushed velvet, which I, which I thought I would point out. Um, On point. Yeah, and Shauna's outfit that she's wearing is really cute. You know, she's got like her little corduroy jacket. And, you know, she just she doesn't have the same style as as Jackie. And um, Jackie is trying to get her to wear this dress because she said that Randy Walsh is going to be at the party and asked if she was going to be there. And Shauna just looks disgusted. <laughs> right, and we saw Randy, or you know, at the at the beginning too, in in that mm -hmm. initial scene. So we know that Randy is going to be, you know, a recurring character here as well. So, um, so they're kind of arguing over this wardrobe, and Randy being at the party, and you know, Jackie said, "I once saw him get outsmarted by an escalator," and then Shauna said, "I once heard him ask who invented the Pope." So, <laughs> that was interesting. So Randy doesn't seem like he's any kind of uh, rocket scientist or mm -hmm. anything like that. So. Um, and then exactly. we cut to the party in the woods. And what do we see Shauna wearing? She's wearing the red dress. She's wearing uh, the red dress. My heart yeah. broke, which is also yeah. crushed velvet, I think. <laughs> very, very <laughs> on trend for 90s wardrobe. Yeah. Um, and we have Nat and some friends um, hallucinating. They're on LSD, not mushrooms here, right? It's LSD. Right. LSD. Yeah. Okay, great. And yeah. then we hear the song Miss World by Hole another nostalgic nod to the amazing 90s music in this episode mm-hmm yep exactly I had I that's another album I wore out yes um <laughs> and then we come back to the present again we see Nat leaving rehab and she's catching a red eye to LAX mm-hmm or a red eye out, out of LA LAX. out of LAX yeah. yes, yes 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 um and, to New Jersey. Uh, yeah yeah and uh, yeah, so she's um, doesn't say where she's going, but I think we all kind of assume. We can venture to guess. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we're back in the past again, back to the party. And we have our friend Randy who lets out a <laughs> disgusting belch. Like, <laughs> oh, I mean, could he be any grosser? Like, seriously, you know, there's always that dude in high school, too. Like, he seems pretty proud of it, too. <laughs> he does, which I mean, <laughs> God, whatever. Um, and then he actually looks at Shauna and he says, I dedicate that to you, sexy lady. I, I don't mean, know how she didn't just drop her panties immediately. Or like vomit <laughs> in his face. Like, I mean, yeah. oh my God, unbelievable. Um, and then we have, uh, we have some drama starting to happen. Um, the mm -hmm. girls are starting to kind of get into it with each other a little bit. So tell us about that. Yeah. So Shauna has been drinking a little bit and I think she's just annoyed at the, the general party atmosphere in general. And uh, she walks up to Ty, who's who's pouring herself a beer and um, and calls her a sociopath for breaking Allie's leg that day. And it just uh, it it just breaks out into World War Three with all the girls just attacking each other. And um, and the one with the influence. Yeah. As we know yeah. Jackie. Right. Tries to help the situation along. Yeah, she kind of turns into the mom pu pulling the the minivan over <laughs> on the side of the road, and she um, she makes all of the the girls follow follow her um, off to the side and <laughs> lines them up and makes them each uh, say one nice thing to each other. And um, I'm sorry, my phone just went, <laughs> but I swear I put it on silent. It um, but she makes them all say one nice thing to each other. Um, and uh, so some of the things said here were really funny. 
um, Nat tells Lottie that uh, she never talks shit about anybody unless she really deserves it, so, unless they really deserve it. So she gives her a genuine that. compliment. Um, and uh, and then she says, also, I really like your pilgrim hat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the LSD talking. Yeah, the drugs right, are, the right, drugs right. are kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but the the most interesting part of the scene, Jack asks, comes up to Shauna and asks if they're cool. And Shauna says, I don't know. You haven't said anything nice about me yet. And Jackie says, um, Shauna Shipman, you're a terrible dancer. You have questionable taste in music and you can't hold your liquor for shit but you're the best friend that I've ever had. And you're the one who's always there for me. So basically you suck unless you're doing stuff for me. <laughs> right. And, and that I think speaks volumes about their friendship and, you know, kind of foreshadows things that are to come. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, no spoiler alerts, but I think that is a very telling thing about their friendship. Very, yeah. very intuitive there for Jackie. Yeah. Um, and then we hear, I think this is your favorite song from the episode, right? We hear Down by the Water by PJ Harvey. Yes. PJ Harvey is like, she's one of my idols. I've loved her since um, her first album came out. And um, yeah, they, we hear Down by the Water, which is another interesting song choice for the series. Um, but uh, they're, it's playing as, um, as uh, Natalie and her friends are sitting at the fire. Um, and she sees Misty. Um, and I think we're, I think she's hallucinating. I don't think Misty was at the party. But it seemed like it could be a hallucination because we did not see Misty at any other point during this party, did we? I don't remember. No, we didn't. Okay, good. Yeah. I don't have that in my notes. Okay. I wouldn't okay. rule out Misty showing up to the party, but it just, I, I don't know if she even has any friends. She kind of seems like a loner, you know? Right, right. She doesn't seem like the party type. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And, uh, so that, as that song is playing, we then cut to Jeff driving the girls home. Yep. And he's driving Jackie and Shauna home. And we have Jackie insisting that she goes home first because she has a curfew, even mm -hmm. though her best friend Shauna also has one. This kind of goes with, you know, Jackie's domination over Shauna. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jeff does that. Uh, Jeff drops Jackie off at home and then him and Shauna continue driving. And then s some things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some sexual um, things. Some sexual things again, Kelly. Yes. Yes. No murder fingering. No time. murder fingering this time. A little, more, <laughs> a little more gentle. A little more gentle, yes. I think. But yeah, Shauna tells him to pull the car over um, and they start making out. And he pulls away and says, whoa, hey, I thought we weren't doing this again. Um, and Shauna says, we're not again. So they obviously have hooked up before, uh, possibly while Jackie, during the mil one of a million times that Jackie and Jeff were broken up. Um, and uh, they, and Shauna clearly wants one last, one last blast. <laughs> Yep, yep. And Kelly, read exactly what Shauna says to Jeff. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> she so they have sex, Jeff. right? Yeah, and what it, this is what she says. She says, if you come inside me, I will raise the baby out of spite and train it to become a killing machine that eventually hunts you down. <laughs> yes. And then she tells Jeff to tell her that he loves her and she won't hold him to it. So yeah, he does. Yeah, which is kind of sad. It is. I mean, the whole thing's a little sad. She's sitting there in a car, you know, having sex with her best friend's boyfriend, yeah. you know, and her boyfriend, her best friend's boyfriend is having sex with her. So they're both doing something wrong, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jackie and Jeff haven't even had sex. So. Yeah. Uh, awkward, right? Yeah, yeah, for awkward, sure. A little awkward. Um, and then after that, we uh, come back to the present timeline. We are back at Shauna's house, and the camera is focusing on the photos on the wall. And one of those photos gives us a clue for the present day timeline, and that mm -hmm. is we see that she's married Jeff. Yeah, uh, yeah. We see their wedding photo, which is of the younger actors uh, cutting a cake, and then we see the next photo of. 
the family with Callie. So it's more a, of a present day photo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so she's married to Jeff now. Yep. And uh, she pulls a cell phone out of the safe and calls somebody we don't know who at this point and says, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the cell phone in the safe, like that's a pretty secret cell phone. I don't know mm -hmm. about you, but I wouldn't keep a cell phone in the safe unless there was a very specific reason. So yeah, for some, sure. Some secret things happening, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then we move to another past timeline. We go back to 1996 and we hear uh, Never Tear Us Apart, which is a cover by Paloma Faith mm -hmm. and a montage of the girls packing and getting ready to leave for nationals. So why don't you run us through each one of the girls and their different situations while they're packing? Yeah, so we see Jackie uh, just packing her, her things into her suitcase. Um, we see Natalie smoking a cigarette in her family's trailer. Uh, Laura Lee is at her bedside praying, and Lottie is uh, sitting at a dining room table in this in a big fancy house. And there's a housekeeper uh, giving her her loxapine. Um, so we learn a whole lot about Lottie in that scene. Yes. Um, and we see Van uh, waking up her mother, who's passed out on the couch, and she has to slap her to to get her awake. Um, this one might be the most interesting that you're about to say, I think. Yeah. Um, we see Misty sitting by a pool watching a rat. Uh, and there's there's been a lot of discussion online as to whether she was watching this rat drown or if it was her pet and she was just letting it swim because rats are, are good swimmers. Um, but uh, she seemed really kind of mesmerized by the whole thing. So I think she was letting it drown. Right, right. Some people were kind of speculating, saying, oh, maybe it was her pet rat or, you know, she put it in the pool or she didn't put it in the pool or whatever. But the fact is, we just don't know because there was no context or background, background with the rat. But I think we can surmise that the rat is going to drown since she's yeah. clearly not rescuing the rat from the pool. Yeah, I think she's mesmerized a little bit at the power that she kind of has over this animal. Mm -hmm. Another kind of telling thing for what we will learn about adult Misty's character. So mm -hmm. um, exactly. it's, it's good. The scene really, you know, kind of sets the tone um, for all the girls. And then um, then we have Thaisa and she's packing, right? What's she doing? She's uh, she's coming down into the kitchen where her parents are. And I love this moment because her dad is that uh, she her mom is uh, like, let me get my keys. And Thais is like, I, I, own, I already have a ride. And uh, she kisses her parents and, and her dad goes, remember, the most important thing is to have fun. And Tyson just gives this look like, yeah, OK, dad, whatever. Typical teenage look, yep. <laughs> yeah. She's Tyson is extremely determined and Tyson doesn't lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then we about see. Winning. Yes, it's all about winning with Thaisa, and that is <laughs> definitely a common theme that we've seen with her character. Yes. Uh, and then we see the Martinez family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of tension here. Um, Travis is just kind of sitting on the car. We don't even know who Travis is at this point, but yep. we'll see more of him later. But he's sitting on the car, just kind of looking annoyed, uh, like he doesn't want to be there. Um, Javi, his younger brother, is getting in the car, and um, the mom tries to give him a kiss, and he just walks right past her. Um, and the coach kind of very awkwardly, very awkwardly <laughs> kisses his wife, and uh, like she just really doesn't want that to be happening. Some um, clear tension there, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm still really curious about what's going on there. Um, and then Shauna, um, Shauna is in her room reading a letter from Brown, um, congratulating her on her early admission, uh, which is interesting because Jackie had already mentioned that they were going to be rooming together at Rutgers the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, so she doesn't know that Shauna has other plans. And um, there is a light bright in the background in her room that says fuck oh you God. which i love i love that you know i was thinking like a light bright would be a cool thing to put in the background right like yeah. I, I don't know maybe i'll get a light bright for the background just to you know tie in i don't know how bright it would actually be you know given that we're in daylight but anyway just awesome. another nostalgic nod there they just infuse all these little you know 90s nostalgia moments and the light bright is no exception mm -hmm. for sure for sure and then we see a really nice shot of the school corridor and it kind of fades into the plain interior. So they're transitioning from watching all the girls get ready to, you know, the school to the plane. 
Yeah, I loved the shot. I thought it was super cool. Absolutely. Um, and then we see the girls on the plane in the past timeline, 1996, and we are able to learn that Lottie's dad, who we've gathered is very wealthy, mm. uh, chartered a private plane for them. Like, what a cool dad to charter a private plane for his teenage daughter and their soccer team. Wow. Yeah, especially, I mean, they're going from New Jersey to Seattle, so that's an expensive flight. So they clearly have a lot of money. Yes. Um, and, you know, speaking of this cross-country trip, uh, the captain says they have to end up going a little bit further north than expected to avoid an incoming storm system, but mm -hmm. they should get a great view of the Canadian Rockies. So that's kind of implying that they're going, you know, north into Canada. Um, also, shout out to my friends from Canada. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. I know they're watching right now. Um, and... You know, we learn uh, this is like setting the tone for what's to come. Um, Jackie gives Shauna a Valium. And what else does she give Shauna, Kelly? She gives her the gold heart necklace. So we see that again. Um, Third time. Third yeah. time we've seen this gold heart necklace now. So that clearly must mean something. Yes. Yeah. She, um, yeah, she gives it to Shauna and says it's for good luck. And now nothing can touch her. Um, wow. So, but it was, it was a really nice moment because I mean, it's, you know, it shows that Jackie really does care about Shauna. I mean, she's clearly very self-involved and, and kind of bosses Shauna around a lot, but she does care about her. Yep. That's, that's obvious. It was a really nice moment. Absolutely. And uh, we also see the first interaction between two other characters in this scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mari and Akila, uh, who I, I love these two. They're kind of they're kind of the uh, the two side characters in the show, but I just I almost feel like in a way they're kind of the voice of the audience a lot of times, um, and you know and they're both different. I mean, Akila is just she's very sweet and she's very useful. Um, she's a she has a lot of strong survival skills, um, and Mari is Mari's just super snarky and and uh, makes a lot of great comments to the girls um, throughout the season, but. They're, they're very different characters, but they're often together and they kind of say a lot of what I think a lot of the audience is thinking at times. <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's a good observation. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It, they're kind of like the little angel and devil, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then from the airplane, we move back into the present 2021 timeline. Um, we see adult Shauna in a diner. Uh, Ty shows up and gives her Jessica Roberts card and said that she's not credited in any bylines. So it, it looks like Thaisa kind of, you know, looked into her and was not able to actually find that she is a reporter. So this, you know, proposes a new question. Who is Jessica Roberts? Yeah, and, and why is she poking around? Um, and uh, she, um, Ty tells Shauna, you know, these people come out of the woodwork every few years or whenever there's a, an anniversary. Um, and uh, there's, you know, you know that this happens. There's no reason to think that this time is any different. And Shauna says, I can think of a few, which, I mean, the obvious reason is that Ty says in the public eye now, um, she saw Shauna saw a commercial for her state Senate run. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering, she says she can think of a few reasons why this time is different. I'm just wondering if there's something else um, going on too, in in addition to it being the anniversary and uh, Taisa running for state Senate. Right. What is that third factor? We don't know. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, and Shauna says that um, asks about Natalie and um Taisa said she's in rehab again. And uh, and Shauna asks if there she says there's still no sign of the others. And Taisa says, no, not for months. So I don't know who the others are that she's referring to. Who are the others? Other survivors, clearly. Mm -hmm. But she's clearly keeping in touch with with Natalie. Mm -hmm. Um and uh yeah, but they're really worried about somebody, somebody digging because they're all fucked if anybody finds out stuff. So it's 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 a really interesting scene. And it, uh, it sets up a lot of mystery. Yep. And, and you know, Shauna ends it with, so as long as no one does anything crazy, we have nothing to worry about. So, <laughs> Which I Which is a great line be right before, for 
to happen Shit gets right crazy. before the next scene. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then we see uh, we're still in the present 2021 timeline. We see Nat at a storage unit, which we can assume is now in Jersey since we saw her getting on the flight from LAX. And mm -hmm. uh, she's getting a Porsche, really nice car. And um, what does she have in the trunk of her Porsche that's been sitting in storage for who knows how long? Yeah, she has a shotgun in the back of her Porsche, in the trunk of her Porsche. It's and intense. that's all that's in the storage unit. It's just a right. Porsche and a shotgun. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, having said that she found her purpose and, you know, gets back to Jersey and gets the shotgun, like, seems like her purpose might have something to do with this gun. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And apparently it's, you know, it's been there for years, but she hasn't been back for years. Yep. Her Porsche yep. and, and the shotgun have been there for years. The bills, the bill keeps getting paid. But um, she explains to the guy from the storage unit that she has not been back home in in quite a while so that's that's interesting she uh she came in to fulfill her purpose <laughs> she did and you know shifting we're still in present but we see adult misty and of course played by christina ricci who we love yes. and she's working as a personal care assistant and mm -hmm. She's doing something kind of twisted, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. She um she's taking care of an of an older lady, um, and the woman has an accident, and uh, Misty just gets pissed off about it and tells her she's gonna skip her morphine dose, and then oh. she le if, and if that's not twisted enough, she leans over to the woman and and tells her, "Don't fuck with me." <laughs> so Misty's. Misty's an interesting character. I mean, right? We've already seen her watching a rat drown, and now mm -hmm. we see her messing with old people. And yeah. that's that's not cool, you know? So we're really starting to kind of uncover the type of person that Misty is and was back then and still is as an adult. And we can just imagine that her time out in the wilderness has, you know, really um, compounded some of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it was clear there clearly was something there before, but I think uh, I think it really the wilderness woke up something inside her. <laughs> clearly, yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's interesting. You had said before, um, you know, you're really interested in the relationship between Nat and Misty. Like, what mm -hmm. happened there? You know, um, so I think you know, as the show goes on, that's going to be an interesting relationship to continue exploring the dynamics of because clearly there's some kind of something that happened there. Yeah. I, I mean, the next thing we see is Miss G is leaving work and she is walking into the parking lot to her car and Natalie is sitting there stalking her. Uh, yep. And as this is happening, we see uh, a shot. The episode ends with that cutting into a shot of the, what the fandom is referring to as the cannibal council. I love uh, that, by the way. I love yeah. Cannibal Council. I think that's the cutest term. Hashtag Cannibal Council. Yes, I love that. And um, she just, anytime you see Nat, you know, they show flashes of these scenes. And they it's implied that perhaps they're eating the girl that fell into the pit. Yep. Um, but these, these little flashes of scenes kind of happen um, with Nat. It, they're associated with Natalie and Misty. And in this particular scene, um, one of the people, one of the members of the Cannibal Council um, lifts up the animal pelt that they have over their face and it's Misty. And she gives this kind of sinister smile that just it's really, <laughs> really messed up. Um, so yeah, there's, God, I can't wait. I, I can't wait to find out more. Um, about Natalie and and Misty and what happened between them and um but I think you know Natalie came with a purpose and now she's stalking Misty outside her work with a shotgun. So. Yes. And uh and that's that's uh that's it. Mhm. Mm yep. Um yeah, it was uh I was, I, you know, I've, I've watched it so many times now, but I was blown away the first time I watched it. And um, I've never had a show hook me like this before. And I think the show is really brilliant with 
insisting that you come back for the next episode. Um, you know, it, they don't necessarily end on um, on major cliffhangers. We did see an allusion to the plane crash, though, at the very end, right? Yes, I'm sorry, yes. we did. Yep. You're right. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, no, you're right. I forgot about that. Very um, quick, though. It was very quick. It was very quick. Um, so yeah, we know Shauna, the plane is going to crash in the next episode. Yes. Yeah, we see Shauna actually at home, adult Shauna, um, looking at her journals in her rabbit pajama pants. And um, and then it shows, yeah, it shows uh, the next scene is of the girls on the plane and the plane is crashing. Yep. And Shauna is waking up from a very heavy volume induced sleep. Um, and wakes up to <laughs> crashing into the into the Canadian wilderness. So that that um, and then the, yeah, it cuts out before the plane even crashes. Thank goodness she had that Valium. Am I right? Yeah. I mean that must have helped take the edge off at least a little bit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Um, so that that's the pilot. Um, and you know, something I'm interested in hearing from our viewers and listeners is, are you watching this episode by episode? Are you binging it? Have you already watched the whole series? We're just kind of curious where everybody is at with their Yellow Jackets journey. Um, you know, we're not going to give spoiler alerts, but just kind of curious where everybody's at. Um, we know that season two will be filming soon. So mm -hmm. that's something to look forward to. And we know that the show has been ordered for five seasons, which gives us a lot to look forward to. It's very, very exciting. Um, yeah. From this episode, though, um, you know, we had a couple of moments we just wanted to touch upon quickly, um, such as our MVP of the episode. Um, you know, they're soccer players. So, of course, we have to have an MVP. So, Kelly, why don't you tell us your MVP from the Yellow Jackets pilot? My MVP is young Natalie. Uh, she, Natalie is my favorite character, um, but one of the reasons that I love her is she just she has a heart, and uh, she, when the girls were arguing about whether or not to freeze Allie out, she was the only one who stood up for for Allie and and said, uh, you know, let's play like a fucking team, and she didn't want to freeze her out, and I just I just thought that was so sweet. Absolutely. Um, you know, I had trouble picking, but I think I'm going to go with um, something that you had also mentioned that you liked was um, adult Shauna and her conversation with Jessica Roberts. I loved her delivery of the smug bitch line. I loved when she called Linda a dumb bitch. I love her well-placed curse words. I mm -hmm. love her attitude. I love everything about her character. So I'm giving her MVP just with the way that she handled Jessica Roberts. I think that, you know, sheds a lot of light on the type of character that she is. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then we did something here. Um, we did a most likely to, we wanted to do a little play <laughs> on yearbooks. So Kelly put together this super cute one and Kelly, tell us about your pick. Allie Stevens. Uh, <laughs> the girl who broke her leg and who was in the very beginning of the pilot episode uh, being interviewed by Jessica Roberts. And we gave her most likely to unfriend you for not joining her MLM. <laughs> yes. She, she kind of seems like that type, you know? Yep. Yep. The type who <laughs> demands to speak to your manager, you know, like she's, yeah. she's uh, a Karen, but in this case an alley. So yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. So uh <laughs> So there we go. We'll have one of those in every episode. Um, you know, if you'd like to share yours, you can always comment or DM us at the Antler Queens. Yep. Um, and then we each picked our favorite song from the episode. So Kelly, what uh, we kind of touched upon that. Yours was? Yeah, mine was Down by the Water by, by PJ Harvey, um, which is off of uh, her album To Bring You My Love, which actually is my favorite PJ Harvey album out of, out of all of them. So if you're not familiar with her music, please check her out. She's amazing. Yes. And you know what, for me, I think I'm going to have to stick with my Marky Mark. I do like Shoop also, but, um, you know, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, Good Vibrations, it just brings me back to my young self. And I, I oh, just yeah. love that. Um, yeah, and, you know, sure. really quick, I'm just going to name all the songs in the episode. I think we should do that for everyone, you know, just to recap all of the incredible um, 90s well-placed songs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Pyramid Song by Radiohead, Today by Smashing Pumpkins. Supernova by Liz Fair, Informer by Snow, Shoop, Salt and Peppa, 
What If by Door Soul. Uh, that's playing while Jackie and Shauna get ready for the party. Uh, Let Me Find Out by Post Nig. Uh, I actually don't know that song. It plays at the yeah, party, I, I guess, but it, it was listed. Uh, Miss World Hole, which we nodded to earlier. Um, Counting Backwards by Throwing Muses. That was at the party. Uh, Wishing Well, Knockout Drops, uh, Down by the Water, PJ Harvey, Never Tear Us Apart, Paloma Faith, uh, which is a cover of an NXS song. So those were the musical moments from this episode. Um, and your favorite 90s moment was, you mentioned earlier, the Sassy Magazines, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely the Sassy Magazines for sure. Yes. And for me, it was just, um, I, I think the music, like the music really, like I'm going to keep saying throughout the podcast, drew me in right from the beginning. Um, I loved it. It just really set the table for that 90s timeline. I I just really appreciated it. And um, I just I just love this show. I, I'm so glad that we found each other, that we found the show. Um, you know, I just happen to have the showtime going to watch Dexter New Blood, which I know that we both watched and mm -hmm. enjoyed. And, um, you know, we actually had to wait like week by week for the new episode. We didn't binge the entire season like some people are probably doing. So good for you if you can binge it because it's hard to wait a week for a new Yellow Jackets episode. It really is. Well, I, I was actually, they were two episodes in when I caught on. So I, I actually, I at least got to see the full, the full plane crash. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. But after um, that, I had to wait. And, you know, the other thing we want to mention is uh, we're going to be streaming live on Thursdays, 1230 uh, Pacific Time, 230 Central, 330 Pacific Time. And um, we also have merch. So mm -hmm. head over to our merch store, antlerqueenspodcast.com. And for those of you watching, I'm just going to show a couple of our designs by the very talented Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites, Peace, Love, and Yellow Jackets. I think that's adorable. We've got Antler Queens. We've got There's No Book Club. Ooh, Doom Coming 96. I ordered my Doom Coming 96 stuff. I can't wait. Oh, another Doom Coming. Um, another cute Antler Queens podcast. We've got Citizen Detectives. Um, so, yeah, visit antlerqueenspodcast.com. Um, and the great part is that the different designs are available on all different types of items. Um, but if there's a design you like and an item you don't see, let us know. We can definitely mm -hmm. add it to the shop. We just didn't want to, like, overwhelm you with a thousand different um, purchase options. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, all right. Well, um, anything else you'd like to share from the pilot episode, Kelly? Um, I don't think so. Um, now, we are not going to be streaming live next week. We're actually, um, you can still catch us at the same time. Um, we're not, we're just not going to be live. It's going to be pre-recorded. Um, but then we should be back for, uh, we should be back streaming live again the week after that. Yes. Um, but, but it will, will air at the same time, at least on Facebook and YouTube. So we will yep. be there. We just won't be able to reply to your comments live, but we will get back to them afterwards. Don't worry. Yes. Yes, exactly. So yeah, find us on, uh, on social media. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at, uh, antler queen seven, um, on Twitter and, uh, Melanie, where, where can they find you on social media? I am at media Melanie on Instagram and Twitter and also on Facebook. And I'm also just going to put up our antler Queens handles here. We are at the antler Queens on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com slash the antler Queens. Uh, you can also visit the antler Queens, uh, dot com, and that will give you links to everywhere, including YouTube, which our vanity URL will be coming soon. And if you buy merch from us, uh, take a picture and we'll put it on our social media. Because Yes, we can't wait to see everyone wearing their fun designs. I can't yeah. wait for my delivery to arrive. I ordered the other day, so it should be here anytime. I know. We both we both got Peace, Love, and Yellow Jackets hoodies, didn't we? We sure did. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I got like the lightweight um, one, so it's not quite a hoodie, but it's a long sleeve and it's very cute and I can't wait to wear it to work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, um, thank you everybody for tuning in. This was our first episode of the Antler Queens podcast with Melanie Rose and Kelly Geist. And uh, we hope you'll join us next time. You know, please follow us, um, drop a comment, let us know what you think. We definitely want to incorporate the fans into this podcast as much as we can. Um, you know, we can bring on guests and that sort of thing. So hit us up. Uh, we want to hear from you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right. And uh, with that, hey, Kelly. What's up? Buzz off. Buzz off. Antler Queen's out.